Welcome back to Two Guys Garage. Now we do have plus one. We've picked <laughs> up Andre, who is a Corvette expert. And this car belongs to Curtis. We met him out at the car show and he's got a slipping clutch that he's really feeling in about third gear. Yeah, so we've got Andre here because this is a very complicated job. Normally on a car, you can take, you know, engine, transmission, drive shaft, and a rear end. You can drop the drive shaft out of the way. That means you got room to push the trans <laughs> back to get to that clutch. Well, on this, you got an engine, clutch, or converter. Then you got this, you know, solid torque tube with a drive shaft going in, mounted to a transmission in the back. What's well, all bolted together as one giant unit with the suspension hanging off the back. There's no space to be found in there. So there's a lot of pulling and, you know, stripping of parts to get to that clutch. But Andre here has been doing this for a while. He's promised he's going to shave off hours off our time. That's right. I've got some industry inside secrets for us, and we're going to share them with you and make this a easy breezy job. So walk us through where we're at right now. We've started by removing the shock absorbers. We've taken the upper control arms off, the exhaust system. We're at the point now where we're ready to lower the transmission and torque tube as a complete unit and remove it from the car to give us access to the clutch. All right, so this should be interesting. It's gonna take a couple of us. There's a lot of juggling, so Let's come on it. and we'll see if we can't do right. it successfully. Yeah, now that's something you're gonna do in your driveway, but with a lift, the proper equipment, and the proper guys with some skills, you know, you could pull this off. Now we've got our whole transmission, our whole cradle here, under our trans jack. And once we start lowering it, you know, it's gonna be unbolted. Now we gotta hang on to it. And then Brian can start, you know, lowering and we're gonna pop this sucker right out from behind that engine. Now we can get access to that clutch. And we don't really have to move it that far. We wanna get it down just far enough. And that's part of the secret to get us access to the clutch so that we can change it. That's right, let's go for it. You ready for a wiggle and a yeah. jiggle? Give it a wiggle and a jiggle. Okay. All right, coming down and all right. All right. I'm going to go ahead and start moving mine a Come little bit. Come on back just a little bit. Yeah. We'll start wiggling it back and yeah, rolling it back. Yeah, easy. A little more? I'm going to give you down a little more. You probably want to bring that middle jack down just a little. Yeah. Take tension off the torque tube. Yeah. Okay. And you'll feel there it. There we go. want to come Perfect. right back. All right. Now we're right. Right. Okay, right there. Let's stop there. Okay. All right. And well, we can get a couple of jacks under these corners here to give us a little bit of stability because, you know, we're just pivoting. And now we can get in there and replace that clutch. Excellent. We haven't taken apart a clutch in a while, so I want to show you kind of all the components just to refresh. This is your flywheel, and it's held together with about six bolts that go around it. That holds your clutch basket. Clutch plates are inside. You got your slave cylinder up here, and that takes your clutch pressure. It goes through a fluid and moves your clutch plates in and relaxes it for you. So a few things you want to look for are fluid coming out of your uh, slave cylinder. You want to look for debris coming around. You want to look for wear marks on the front of your shaft, and that looks okay going through your torque tube. So at this point, let's just go ahead, we'll take a screwdriver, kind of move the flywheel around so we can get to the bolts. We'll take those out, and then we'll have good access to the flywheel. We'll get that out of here too. Brian and Andre are pulling all these clutch parts out. We get a chance to look up close, see how they work and what went wrong. Now clutch works pretty much like a disc brake except kind of in reverse. You've got an iron rotor in the middle. You've got two friction materials clamping, connecting the wheel to the car and ultimately stopping it. Well, we're going to go backwards. We've got an iron rotor essentially on both, both sides, but we've got a friction material buried right in the middle. Now this is your clutch. The flywheel side bolts to the engine, of course, so this is always spinning with the engine. Now this guy is just floating around in there, except that he's riding on the splines Watch of the input head. shaft of the transmission. <laughs> he had his head coming out. Uh-oh. <laughs> Battle scars. Why are you so clean still? Well, I'm working oh, you on it. dirty in there. I'm working on it. Go wash up. You go wash up. <laughs> Didn't cause any work, just playing around. Now, once we've got our clutch disc, you know, kind of floating around in there, connected to the trans loosely, then we've got our pressure plate. This will bolt together clamp it all as one unit. So this is fixed. The whole drive line is connected until you hit your pedal. The hydraulic fluid pushes on this cylinder here and this guy pushes on these fingers. These fingers actually release the clamp load, let you shift your gears. That's right. That's where all the action happens is right in there. That's right. Now speaking of action, we've had some bad action in this clutch. That's true. This particular clutch has a problem based on heat and wear and those wear patterns are showing clearly 
on the flywheel and on the pressure plate with small dark colored bands all the way around the edges. Yeah. Those particular bands are what caused the deformation of the clutch and the wear. Yeah, and we've got a second to third gear slip, and then when he really hammers on it in third gear, right? And loses clamping load, absolutely. Just letting go, and that spinning action is adding even more heat, so it's just a downward right. spiral. It's just getting worse and worse, absolutely. Yeah, you can see you know, right across here the surfaces, how we've got our machine surface almost, and mm -hmm. then almost a chattery. And if we look at our clutch, we can see uh, almost some shiny areas, and then these dull areas where we're not even really contacting, and That's almost right. some fraying, maybe even some delamination. Delamination of the fiberglass material, absolutely. Yeah, now we gave Curtis, the owner of the car, the option to do you know, a factory replacement clutch, was a really good piece, or an upgrade clutch, and of course, you went with the guy? upgrade. Absolutely, so when we come back, we're gonna do a side-by-side, -side, show you the, the two, and you know, what the improvements are on the new one, and get it installed. Hey, welcome back. We've got Curtis, our lucky winner. He owns this 2002 Z06 Corvette. Now he's getting a free Federated Auto Parts clutch. Now we let him pick. Did he want, you know, the brute power, the stock replacement clutch, or did he want to upgrade to the Zoom? Of course, he picked the performance clutch. Now let's walk through, you know, the differences between the two. So this is a stock clutch here. It's a diaphragm style. Uh, and here's our new clutch here, which is also a diaphragm style. Different number of fingers. It's okay. Um, but what's interesting about the stock one is these extra springs here around the perimeter and there's some extra sort of monkey motion going on inside. And what this is, is a self-adjusting uh, diaphragm clutch. Kind of like uh, brake shoes on the back, they've got self-adjusters and return springs. There's more stuff in here and it's basically to kind of give you a consistent feel over the lifetime of the clutch in the vehicle. So everything seems pretty, you know, solid and then at the end of life it just sort of drops off. Well. There's more stuff in there, more things to go wrong. It can forward advance, it can prematurely wear out. So we're gonna go back to a traditional, very simple, uh, high performance you know, diaphragm clutch. So that's gonna be you know, maintenance free, super simple, high torque capability. So we've got a little bit higher clamp load in our springs here and our fingers in the diaphragm. Now we've also increased the coefficient of friction slightly in our materials here. So between the clamp load, the coefficient of friction coming together, we ought to be able to transmit a lot more torque to those rear wheels, and that's what it's all about. So we've got all our new components. All we've got to do is put them back where the old ones came out, get this thing on the road. I'm going to show you how to put the slave cylinder back in. Really simple, especially when you have a friend holding the flashlight for you. <laughs> you know, we've cleaned the shaft off, put a little bit of grease on there. We've changed out the pilot bearing, and it's just a couple of bolts. So this is really easy. And then uh, we're ready for the flywheel. One of the reasons why we did it this way was in order to give us access to this particular piece to make it easier to install the clutch assembly. Over here we've got the flywheel, which is prepped and ready to go, which we've cleaned off. Flywheel side. Okay, she's gonna go this direction. Now we're gonna line that up with the dowel pins after we've cleaned it, and we're gonna go ahead and install it onto the flywheel. Oh, we're gonna push it up in here and hopefully it goes smooth so that we look really cool. There right we go. There. All right, we're looking good. Now we're gonna go ahead and position that clutch plate inside there with our locator pin and go ahead and get the bolt started. Now it's time to reinstall the whole assembly. I've got my robotic team here, just like the factory, and we just wanna gently guide it in. It's going pretty good. And we wanna make sure we don't drop this. Oh. Got it. That's it. All okay. Right, we just got to raise this thing up. We got an alignment pin here, a couple of bolts. Make sure our emergency brake cable is on the correct side. Push her up, and I think good everything else back. is, yep, good up front. All right. Looking good. Start running a few more bolts and put everything back together. <laughs> 